something slightly different from our normal context. I want to turn your attention to the uh, responsive readings that are in the back of our hymn books. Responsive reading this morning, I think I'd like to go to uh, 592. Responsive reading number 592. And it's all listed under Christian unity. Christian unity. One of the things that we need to learn to be careful with is all these titles and labels that come our way. A lot of times the title sounds good, but it's not necessarily everything that we think that it ought to be. On Wednesday night we actually uh, identified uh, something whereby the scripture says over in 1 Corinthians, all things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. 
There's a whole lot of stuff that's out there. Sounds good, may even look good, but doesn't necessarily mean that it is good for us. When we start talking about Christian unity, let's see what the scripture says. This starts out in, in uh, Psalm uh, 133 and 1 Corinthians uh, 12, 12 through 20 and 25 through 27. Amen. I'm going to read the light print, you read the dark print, we'll all read the last verse together. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments. As the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessings, even life forevermore. For as I one, and had many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit, we are all are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bound or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, Because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, Because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, it is therefore not of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now that God set the members, every one of them, in the body, as they have pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet of one body. That there should be no schism. I want to repeat that. That there should be no schism in the body. And that schism means conflict. Confusion. Amen? Amen? That there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. For when one member be honored, all the members be joined to it. Together, now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. Thus in the reading of God's word. I mentioned earlier about that series on body language. And here again, the word speaks very clearly. God has declared that he has gifted the body. Amen? Amen. Even as you are human, the many things that you see going on in your spirit are associated. God is one of those kind of guys that just, he, he tries to keep things simple enough for us to grasp because he's spirit. We can't understand the magnitude of God. But he gives us illustrations throughout the word that we can sort of get a snapshot of and try to make some sense out of it. Amen? Again, we thank and praise God that he's given us an opportunity to uh, come together for worship. Now, there are a number of things after we hear from our administrator that uh, I believe needs some prayer attention this morning. Amen? Yeah. Mm. Good morning. Good morning. Building on a sure foundation, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Matthew 16, 18. For other foundation can no man lay the that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 3.11. Building faith, family, and fellowship on the principles and promises of God's word. Our talk for today from Jesus calling. I love you with an everlasting love. 
The human mind cannot comprehend my constancy. Your emotions flicker and flatter in the face of varying circumstances, and you tend to project your fickle feelings onto me. Thus, you do not benefit fully from my unfailing love. You need to look beyond the flux of circumstances mm -hmm. and discover my blazing lovingly, loving you back to you. This awareness of my presence strengthens as strengthens you as you receive and respond to my love. I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let my love flow into you continually. Your need for me is a constant, is as constant as the outflow of my love to you. Jeremiah 31 3, Exodus 15 13. Our key theme and verse for um, 2023 together. I waited patiently for the Lord to help me, and he turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the pit of despair, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on solid ground and steadied me as I walked along. He has given me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see what he has done and be amazed. They will put their trust in the Lord. Psalms 41 through 3. Don't take risks with your help and don't put others in your Trust God, depend on Him, rely on Him, pay attention to your surroundings. The numbers are rising with new variants. Sunday, October 8th, that's Pastor James and Grace. Sunday, October 8th, 2023, our PDM meeting was at 8 a.m. morning worship, 11 a.m. and Holy Communion following morning's worship. Sunday, October 15th, uh, 11 a.m. morning worship. Sunday, October 22nd, Morning worship at 11 a.m. and Sunday, October the 29th is a uh, morning worship begins at 11 a.m. Remind me, it's not important, but October is Pastor's Appreciation Month. Thank you. Amen. 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 Matter of fact, that's that uh, commitment that I have on Thursday. I, I, know, I know that I have it on the calendar, but I, when I go to think about it, I Never am able to uh, remember that particular one. I do have a, a uh, an engagement on that day. Um, in conjunction with the announcements just read, I believe I read last week that um, Pastor Chandra Williams up at United today is her uh, 11th pastoral anniversary, and there is a service going on this morning, and there is one at 3:30 this afternoon. I also have received three, well, three o'clock. Yeah, I also received information for uh, Pastor Little. Um, they are having a women's uh, worship uh, event over there on the twenty-eighth, and it is uh, that's I believe that's on a Saturday. Yes, it's uh, Saturday, October twenty-eighth. And that's going to be at 1 p.m. So that's a uh, uh, women in worship service over at uh, James Springs on uh, the 28th. There is a convocation going on this week up at uh, Mount Erie Church of God. And uh, there are a number of other major events taking place that... Here again, I, 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 I believe that God wants us to be more engaged so that we might be able to better serve not only community, family, and others that we uh, are committed to. Uh, we were also with, uh, in a meeting on yesterday, the Community Forgiveness and uh, uh, Restoration Program, and there are some folks that I need to do some follow-up on because I believe that there is some help. Uh, Deaconess, did you get that message I left you? Check your, check your phone. Uh, but I, I was given a message to send to you. And uh, check me after service if you don't find it, and we will, uh, I'll convey that message. But there's some other folks that we need to do some follow-up for and on so that they might 
be able to receive help. There are helps of all types and magnitudes that are available to people, but in many instances, we're not getting that help and people are living and suffering because they don't know what's available to them. Amen? Amen. Uh, we want to beef up our uh, bulletin boards out there, the ones out there in the hall, because there are a lot of times folks, when they come in, they, uh, you're able to see things. You notice that I'm starting to put different types of books out there, book information. Well, if you see that book out there, and that book been sitting out there, and if you didn't ask no questions, I assume that you either uh, are not interested in the book, or I assume that you already read the book. Now, the book that's still out there is Pastor's Diaries. Mm -hmm. There's some very interesting stories in there because that book is designed and is written by uh, uh, various pastors, a chapter each, of things that go on in this pastoral journey. Some of them are good, and some of them are very, very painful. I have a couple of books at the house. One is Things Pastors uh, uh, Wish Their their churches knew, and then one is uh, a book called uh, What Women Wish Their Pastors Knew. Mm. Mm. There's a lot of really good information, and uh, one of the books that we're going to be engaging in real soon are uh, the one on Kingdom Discipleship and the other one on uh, Created the Dream, so that you might begin to see more and more, why did God save you? Amen? Mm -hmm. He didn't save you as a trophy. Mm -hmm. He didn't save you just to, you know, put a label on you. Mm -hmm. He saved you mm -hmm. to serve. Amen? And we'll, we'll get into a little bit of that in just a few moments. Amen? Amen. So, uh, in addition to that, I want you to think about what's been going on in our world and what's going on around you and I. Mm -hmm. Last Sunday... Uh, there were a lot of folks that took a deep breath because uh, there was uh, there was a lot of fear that the government was going to shut down. Well, right, mm -hmm. and they weren't going to get their resources. Well, you need to remember that God still sits higher than the government, mm -hmm. and God can. Uh, there's a verse of scripture in the Proverbs that says that the king's heart uh, is in the hand of the Lord, and, and, and God can turn it. Even like he turns the river. The river don't just run straight. The river rolls where God chose to move it. And the king's heart can be turned that way as well. Amen? Amen. Your heart can be turned that way. That's why instead of arguing, you get on your knees and you pray. You talk to the Lord. Let the Lord start motivating and changing and turning hearts and stuff like that. In addition to that, we noticed that although the government did shut down, there was some Ugly Some <laughs> ugly stuff that took yes. place Amen. that still has a lot of folks Amen. all shook up. Mm -hmm. Amen? Well. Now, in addition to that, what are some of the other uh, uh, culturally and news-breaking things that you and I should be concerned about? Mm -hmm. Well, what about the young lady that was sitting in her car and the guy decided to get off the motorcycle, jump on the back of her car, mm -hmm. and stomp the, the window in? Amen? Her children were in the back. That's yes. not normal behavior. Amen. And then get off and hit butter and then did pull a gun on her and, mm -hmm. and all this other nonsense. Yes. And, yes. and it wasn't nothing but God that protected her. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. But thank mm -hmm. God she's a mother that wasn't going to take that thing going down. She shoved him over on the she did. And we hear that they did uh, get a hold of this they individual. Yeah. This is one of the few times that they did. That the folks with their cameras turned the information in. Yep. Another young man got shot up in his own place. Amen? Regardless of what his position is, sin is still sin. Right is still right. Wrong is still wrong. What about those folks over in Israel sitting there and then all of a sudden now you, you got moms going through? All right? You and I have a lot to be praying about. And praying for. So so uh, as we uh, spend just a few moments in prayer, uh, as the Spirit leads, somebody start us out and then we will conclude in, in prayer this morning. Amen? 
Most holy and everlasting God, our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this another day. We thank you, dear Lord, for life, health, and strength. We thank you, Lord, for carrying us through this week. We thank you, Lord, for our families. We thank you, Lord, for our members. We thank you, Lord, for our friends. We thank you, Lord, for this ministry. We thank you, Lord, for our pastor. We thank you, Lord, for Sister Carol. We ask you to bless those in the hospitals, bless those in prison, bless those at home that cannot come out the house, God. Take the ministry to them. Yes, God. We thank you, God, for everything. You said if we lift you up, if we give you praise, mm -hmm. that you would bless us and you would provide for us. So, God, we thank you today. Mm -hmm. We glorify you today. We honor you today. And we thank you for the privilege and opportunity to be able to say, thank you, Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, God. Lord, we don't take it for granted when you wake us up in the morning. We thank you for the opportunity to, to give to others, to serve others, God. And Lord, we just thank you. We just thank you for everything. We ask you, Lord, to bless this day, bless this service, bless the word of God that will come through. Ask you, Lord, to show us how to apply the word to our daily living so that, God, others, we can share and bless others through your word. Lord, we thank you, God. We just thank you because you are worthy of all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. Today, God, we lift you up. We give you glory and we give you honor. And we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Now, Father and God, we don't want you to just stop here on the corner of 29th and Master. But, Father, we know and we realize that there are needs. There are, even this week, Lord, there are several families that are weighted down because of uh, loved ones having come on home to be yeah. with you. Thank and you. although that's a joy and a blessing for the departed, yeah. Father, it still leaves yeah. a vacuum yeah. in the hearts and yeah. the minds of families and loved ones. Yeah. We pray, oh God, for all those that are in need of healing. We pray for those that are confused. We pray for those that are baffled. And Lord, we pray for those that are prison bound and those, Lord, that are behind prison walls. We pray, oh God, that you would remember those that are being battered by folks who have taken the liberty to bomb them and wow. to come into their private worlds and exert their pressures upon them. Lord, it happens in governments, it happens in personal families, it happens in locales. Lord, there were three or four police officers that got shot up just a few days ago. There are a number of things happening even in our communities. And Lord, just because it may not happen on my block, help us not to, 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 to crawl back or, or dismiss it as though it is insignificant. But we pray, Lord, that you will give us a heart and a care and a concern for all mankind. Lord, we pray that you would help us to pray for those in government, pray for those, Lord, in high places that they might uh, uh, find themselves in a place where they can at least pay attention to the yes. needs of the people yes. that they serve. We ask, oh God, that you would guide and direct us and that you would bless every branch of Zion lifting up Christ. Even now, God, we thank you, we praise you, and we count it as done. For it's in Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. And I want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And amen. 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 There are times when God wants to use you as an individual. Yes, yes, yes. And what happens is there are times when he wants to do that and we become resistant. I want you to think about it. I want you to think about a time when God might have prompted your heart to do something and, eh, I don't want to be bothered with it. Eh, I don't want to do that. Eh, I don't like them anyway. That's a sober. But it's real. There are times that there are people that we may not uh, have a good flavor for. 
Now I say flavor, but in actuality, I mean faith. Amen. And what happens is that we begin, we become resistant, and we don't want to be bothered with this. We don't want to be bothered that. Now I'm going to take it another step. See, there are times when we don't have a good savor flavor for what God wants us to do. Because sometimes God wants us to do something that we're not really crazy about. Amen. Amen. And, and, and it don't have to be a complicated thing. Amen. Amen. Sometimes it's something that if, if you feel like it, you, you, you like to do it. And sometimes it's something that as long as you get the credit for it, you don't mind doing it. Mm, I know there's a blessing coming out of this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we're going to look at the Bible this morning, and I'm going to ask you to turn with me. Amen. Remember now, we have, we're, we're having communion this morning. Too. Amen. And I guarantee you, everything that we say that we're going to be speaking out of the Old Testament, you can see application right here around the communion table. Because remember, Jesus lived in the transitional period of taking the Old Testament and dragging it forward. I like the way Reverend Charles used to say it. He said that uh, uh, the Old Testament and the New Testament and Jesus in the middle. And he's dragging the Old Testament into the New. Amen? So as we look at these things, I want you to turn with me to Exodus chapter 32. Exodus chapter 32. And in Exodus 32, we're going to be looking at some very interesting things. Amen? Amen. And uh, when we look at these uh, things that we see here, I want to talk about the importance of living by God's standard. Now, a few weeks ago, we were talking about how important it is for us to understand that as you and I progress through life, I want you to think about some of the major changes that happen in your life. When you were in elementary school, you thought one way. And then when you got to junior high school, things changed a little bit. And you had to operate a little bit differently. When you got to high school, things changed a little bit. Amen? Yeah. When you started your first job, when you, you got married, when you started parenting, at every stage there was something different going on. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. And what happens is that at each one of those stages, you had to do some kind of a personal evaluation or a re-evaluation mm -hmm. on how do I handle this now? Mm -hmm. Your 20s, you did one thing. Well, your 30s, you did something else. Mm -hmm. When you start hitting the 40s and certain things start shifting and changing, you started doing something else. Mm -hmm. 50s and 60s, and, and, and you can keep on climbing. But at each one of those stages, there was something different going on. And we said, well, Lord, what would you have me to do what? Now. Now. Amen? Now. But you see... Not only do you ask yourself those questions, but this morning, we want to step back a little bit and try to find out, well, why is it so important that we need to learn to live by what? God's standards. Amen? Amen. By God's standards. How many can think about the fact that you had a job doing something, and you left that job, and you went to a different job? When you got to that other job... They had a whole different way of doing business. Amen. Amen? Amen. There was, I, I, I know of an individual that got good at what they were doing. They used to be a tree surgeon. And they left that job and then they went to one of those other shredder places. And when they got to the shredder place, it was a whole different world. But he had a whole different scenario of obligations and expectations. Well, well. And, you know, sometimes we, you know, grass looks green on the other side. Well. And then we say, you know, I sure wish I was back. Well, well. You, you understand what I'm saying? Well. See, 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 the standard change. Yeah. So you and I need to adjust to the new standard. The new standard. Here is one thing that God does. When God saves you, and he gives you his standard, mm -hmm. 
his standard does not have anybody around to do a rewrite. Mm -hmm. When I was in corporate America and we would write procedures, every so often we have to upgrade the yeah. procedure. Yeah. Amen? Amen? God don't have nobody around right, to upgrade then. his right. procedure. Yeah, no. If he say it, he, said it. he meant it. He said Amen? It now any, any application that he wants us to, to, to uh, uh, apply to his word and to the way his word is being lived out, He's going to do that by way of giving you additional information through the same thing. Amen. All right. You know that the Holy Spirit is the same one in the Old Testament as it is in the New Testament. Right now. Do you know that the New Testament said that there is no private interpretation of the Scripture? All right. Amen. Amen. Do you know that the New Testament says that God breathed and the word uh, uh, that is used, He exhaled. Amen. 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 He breathed yeah. His word mm -hmm. unto us. Amen. So it's not going to change. Mm -hmm. No matter how much you may want it to. Mm. So, let's look at Exodus chapter 32. Mm -hmm. And I want you to remember in a time when you start looking at the context well, of what was happening, you also need to look at the timing. Because remember I said, mm -hmm. during the different stages of life, different things begin to change, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I want you to notice that God had already brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. Amen. 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 And they were in that area where Moses was having these frequent visits mm -hmm. up and down the mountain to talk with God. Amen. And it was Moses that God uh, met, and the scriptures say he met him face to face. Amen. And it was Moses that God would give insight and give him uh, information about what his instructions were for the children of Israel. It was Moses that God set in place as their leader. Isn't that right? Yeah. Now, the Bible says that while Moses was frequenting God, mm -hmm. what took place, the people began to change. Well, Amen? Amen. Our government is changing a lot now, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Isn't that right? Amen. Listen to what the scripture says. Now, I'm going to be uh, 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 laboring out of King James when we get to the actual uh, discourse. But I'm going to read this portion out of the Christian Standard Bible. Mm -hmm. Beginning with verse 1, he says, When the people saw mm -hmm. that Moses delayed well, in coming down from the mountain, my, my. they gathered around. They gathered around what? Aaron. Mm -hmm. And said to him, Come, make gods for us well, well, well. who will go before us. Mm -hmm. Because this Moses, the man who brought us up from the land of Egypt, yeah. Yeah. we don't know what has happened to him. Oh my God. I want you to think about that now. Because they made it real clear mm -hmm. that they understood and they knew how they got where they were. Isn't that right? All right. Mm -hmm. Verse 2, and Aaron replied to them, take off the gold rings yes. that are on your ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters and bring them to me. So all the people took off the gold rings that were on their ears and brought them to Aaron. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. I want you to remember that name, right? Mm -hmm. He took the gold from them, fashioned it with an engraving tool, mm -hmm. and made it into an image of what? A cat. Mm -hmm. Then they said, Israel, these are your gods. Who what? Brought. Brought you up from the land of Egypt. Have mercy. When Aaron, there's that name again, saw this, he built an altar in front of it and made an announcement. There will be a festival to the Lord tomorrow. Now, listen to this. Early the next morning, they arose 
offered burnt offerings and presented fellowship offerings, the people sat down to eat and drink and got up to party. King James said they got up to play. Let's pray. <laughs> Our God and our Father, we pray this morning that by your spirit, you'll help us to see the simplicity of what it is that you're trying to communicate unto us. Lord, we're no different than they were during the time of Moses. Lord, there are things that we have seen. There are transitions. There are people whose attitudes, whose mindsets, whose energy has changed, has transitioned. There are folks, Lord, you said even in the New Testament that in the latter days, the love of many is going to do what? Wax cold. So, Lord, we take you at your word. But we ask this morning that you will help us to learn from your word and see some of the things that, 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 that cause them, see some of the gaps, see some of the things, the problems that they came in contact with that caused them to begin to slide back and to drift back and to drift away and help us, oh God, to shore ourselves up so that, Lord, failure don't have to start with us. Yeah. Father, we pray that by your Spirit you'll have your way. Yeah. Touch our hearts, touch our minds, touch our spirits in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I find this to be very, very important for us to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. And I believe God finds it to be important mm -hmm. for us to pay attention to as well. Mm -hmm. Now, I stopped at verse 6. We will get a little bit further, Lord willing. Mm -hmm. But I do want you to uh, uh, pay attention to verse 7 because that's a transitional verse that we're going to get to uh, hopefully this morning. Verse 7 after the, 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 the Bible says in verse 6, how they rose up that morning, mm -hmm. amen, yeah. and they sat down to eat and to be merry and to offer those sacrifices and, and, and burnt peace offerings. Mm -hmm. The people sat down to eat mm -hmm. and to drink, mm -hmm. but they got up to play. Yeah. The Christian standard verse say they got up to party. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And, 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 and that's the attitude that you're beginning to see in a lot of circles. Mm -hmm. We're getting up to enjoy life. We're getting up to enjoy the fact that, 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 that life has gotten a little bit different for me here and a little bit different for me there. Mm -hmm. When the pandemic was going on and going hard and heavy, there were a lot of folks that were crying and moaning and groaning oh, until we got the stimulus. And once we got the stimulus, and we began to evaluate and reevaluate, oh my God, look at all this stuff that we got. Look at where we are today. I'm getting more now than I was before this, this, this thing started. And guess what? I'm getting more now, and I ain't going to work. Well, well, well. You need to keep in mind, the children of Israel, they were in... They, they, they were slaves. Yes, yes. They were in bondage. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says that God brought them out of there. God, my God. And when God brought them out of there, yes. and then they got to the place where they got comfortable. Yes. Amen. All right. Now. And when Moses was up getting more information for them, and Moses was away for a season. And they looked around and they say, I ain't got no supervisor mm -hmm. looking over me. Well, Hello. Well, uh -huh. Amen. Watch yourself. Then they decide, hey, listen, we don't know where that God went. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we want you to make us some gods. All right. We want you to make us what we've been comfortable with while we were living down here in Egypt mm -hmm. in bondage. Yeah, yeah. See, in Egypt they had all of those God. little... Yeah. Man-made gods. They got the store-bought gods. They got all the kind mm -hmm. of things. But the Bible says in verse 7, mm -hmm. and the Lord, you need to understand this now. Right now. See, they were down at the foot of the mountain. All right now. 
when Aaron went through all of this stuff with them, and even after the calf, and when the people got excited, it was the same Aaron well, that well, built the altar. Yes. And Aaron said, mm. we're going to have a feast. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right. Have you seen worship centers change their focus? Mm -hmm. Have you seen worshipers change their focus? And then Aaron said, and, and then God says in verse 7, the Lord said, Moses, go, get thee down for your people. You see how God blamed Moses? <laughs> Moses up there talking to the Lord. Amen. How many of y'all trying to get the blame pushed on me? <laughs> he said, Moses, go down. Your people which you brought out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. I, I, I need us to see that this is not something that your pastor sat up and declared. This is written, it's declared, it's, it's, it's not just in stone. Amen? God has preserved it so that we might know it's there. And God is not changing it just because the government changed. All right, God does not change it because the people around us change. All right. God does not change it just because the times and the seasons have changed. Amen. Amen? You know, uh, uh, we are, one of those things that happen that change when you start getting a little bit older and all that. Now, I didn't turn that fan off because uh, I don't want a little bit of air or whatever. I turned it off because... We got some feedback that, that, that there was somebody that couldn't hear me because of the fan. Amen? All right. So what am I doing? I'm, I'm, I'm making uh, uh, myself a little less comfortable so that they might hear what the Word of God has to say. Mm -hmm. You and I, if we're engaging in the will of God, we need to recognize and realize that there are times we got to lay down what we want to do. If we're going to yes. please the God right. that has told us what we, watch this now, right. ought to do. Yes. What I want to do mm -hmm. should be on the bottom of the priority list. Remember we talked about priority the other night? Mm -hmm. It ought to be on the bottom of the priority list mm -hmm. so that I might honor what God has commanded me to do. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? So let's look at this thing now. When we start talking about uh, God's will... See, we need to define how God set his standard. If you go back to Exodus chapter 20, you can jot that down, and we're going to hit some of that a little later on. But in Exodus chapter 20, we find uh, what we are familiar with as the 20, I mean, the, the uh, um, Ten Commandments. Amen? Everybody familiar with the Ten Commandments? And, and, and here's the thing. That's not all the law of God, but that's a snapshot. That's a global snapshot mm -hmm. of the things that God is telling us. And you're going to see how critical these things are as we continue to navigate this thing. God describes mm -hmm. his standard yes. as his word. In the Ten Commandments, in Exodus chapter 20, he says, first and foremost, God spake. Mm -hmm. Amen. All these words saying, I am the Lord your God, mm -hmm. which have brought thee out. Of the land of Egypt. Now see, God done already declared. Yes. I brought you out. Yes. Amen. Amen. See, God kept a record of what he was doing. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. God said, I brought you out. Now, here in, 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 in chapter 32, at the beginning of the chapter, the people became impatient or, you know, they used to say that... Uh, uh, that if you have too much time, it's the devil's play shop. Mm -hmm. And these people must have had too much time on their hands. Amen. Instead of praying, they began to play. Amen. All right. And, 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 and what's happening is that, 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 that they came to this conclusion all by themselves. But it wasn't a conclusion, was it? All right. Yeah. Say, look back at the text. All right. In chapter 1, uh -huh. I mean 32, mm -hmm. and in verse 1, the Bible says that when Moses delayed to come down from off the mountain, mm -hmm. the people got together. All right, man. Now, remember now, mm -hmm. 
Aaron was Moses' spokesperson. Yeah. When God called Aaron to be a servant. Amen. <laughs> And I, I, I really want to hammer this down. You know why? Because it's all about <coughs> leaders and leadership. And it's critical that you and I need to see and understand <coughs> that when God called Moses to be the leader of the people, and Moses said, I, I, I got this speech problem, well, it was God, <coughs> watch this now, who raised up Aaron to be his spokesperson. Mm -hmm. I want you to understand, that's the same Aaron. And when Aaron was at Moses' side as his spokesperson, amen, well, then what happens is while Moses is up on the mountain getting intimate information from our God mm -hmm. on how to structure, to lay out, and to teach the people his standard, which is his word, mm -hmm. what happened? Moses was down there with the people. Well... As the leader, Moses should, I mean, uh, Aaron should have been holding them folks in check. Isn't that right? Amen. Don't you think so? Amen. He should have been holding folks in check. All right. He should have been reminding them folks of what God did. Amen. But they came and they circled around him. And the Bible says, Amen. they said to him, come on, make us gods for us who will go before us because this Moses the man who brought us up from the land of Egypt. We don't know where he is. Now, 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 that's real clear, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That they understood and they remembered and they knew that Moses was the one that God used to guide them up out of their horrible set of circumstances. My, my, yes. No question about it. Mm -hmm. Moses, the guy that led us up out of there. We don't know where he at right now. Now, it'd have been, they'd have been better off saying, listen, let's get us a search party. Let's see if we can't find this Moses. And let's find out if there's anything else that he wants to give us as far as instruction. Or they would have said, oh, Aaron, you were with him. What does he have to say? What does he want us to know? Amen? Amen. You know what I find out sometimes? Every once in a while, there are folks that are calling each other and say, what the pastor said? What, what do you think the pastor wants us to do? Mm hmm. Mm. Amen. See, now that's a smart move. At least you're going back to some standard. Amen. Amen. Now, the standard that you get from me is only going to be from the Word. Amen. Amen. And that's what Aaron could have taken them back to. But no, they said, come on, make us some gods. Gods that we can declare. Gods that brought us. Gods that will lead us. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right. And what did Aaron do? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he said, give me your earrings. Yeah. It's going to cost you. Well, you want a God? It's going to cost you. Yeah. Give me your earrings. Give me your bracelets. Give me all that other well, stuff that you got. Well, give it up. Give it out. <laughs> Amen. All right. I'll make it for you. Give it up. <laughs> Amen. Y'all cute today. Give it up. <laughs> oh, 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 let me see what my glasses is at. I think I see gold singing on your chest. Yeah, get it out. <laughs> Amen. Right. And the Bible says well, that he took that stuff and he melted that stuff down. Now, there's a verse later on in the chapter where he says that when, when, when Moses got in his grill and, and, and he says that, that he, he brought all that stuff down and, and he put that stuff in and, and he melted it and he said, Oh, King. Up came, you know, you know, like this thing. He had a pot full of gold, and all of a sudden it just rose up, and, and, and it became a calf. No, it didn't just become a calf because the Bible had already defined the fact that he took a graven tool and he was he was gifted. Yeah. He was good at what he did. Are you understand what I'm saying? Well, so, you see, well. you need to understand that there's some leaders out here that are good at what they do. They can talk nice. They can swoon you. They can move you. And you need to pay attention to all that stuff. But look what the Bible says he did. Amen? It said, we don't know what happened to him. And, and, and the Bible says that in verse 2, Aaron, he replied to them, well, just give me your stuff. You know, give me all that stuff. Not just yours, the one off your sons, your daughters, and everybody else. Give me your stuff. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to fix it for you. Amen? Now, I want you to keep that thought in mind because I'm flipping back and forth right now between Exodus 20 and Exodus 32. 
Because in Exodus 20, where we find the Ten Commandments, amen, amen. amen. Well, and then he says uh, uh, in verse 2 of Exodus 20, he said, I'm the Lord your God, which brought you out, out of the land of Egypt, mm -hmm. out of the house of bondage. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt have what? No other gods. No other gods before me. But now these folks said, look, y'all, look, make me a God. Make us a God. Make us, no, they didn't say a God. They said, make us God's son. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right. Make us gods, and with those gods, for who we will go, mm -hmm. amen, for who, for us, who will go before us, right? Because this Moses, amen, the man who brought us up from the land of Egypt, we don't know where he is no more. Mm -hmm. But they were accustomed to seeing, excuse me, the Egyptians following these little things around and following this pageantry and all that stuff. Verse 3 of Exodus 20, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Verse 4, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. See, God takes care of this. God wiped out all our excuses. He wiped out every territory that mm. the human mind could imagine. Well, If you think about something up there, I got that covered. If you think about something that you can see with your naked eye, I got that covered. If you think about something that might be down in the, uh, under the water, I got that covered. So he says, you don't make nothing out of anything mm. that resembles anything that your imagination can come to and call it a god mm -hmm. and pay your attention to it. Now, here's where I get down and personal. Mm -hmm. I have to get down and personal here because God taught me the importance of this down and personal thing. Amen? Mm -hmm. I love my wife. Been married to her for 49 years. Went with her five years before that. But God has made it perfectly clear she is not to be a God to you. There are people that have loved their children to the extent that we exalt our loved ones and our children above the God that we serve. And he says without any reservation, nothing, nobody, no thing shall you exalt or treat it like a God. I don't care what anniversary it is for you. Or you or me. Amen? Amen. He said nothing or nobody. Amen? Amen. There are people that treat their children like little gods. Amen. Amen. All right. We need to be careful with that. So with that being said, the scripture shows us that when they turn around and they replied to Aaron and said, well, Why don't you make us some gods and stuff like that? And he told them what to do. And then Aaron, he took the gold from them in verse 4. Amen. He took the gold from them and he fashioned it with an engraver's tool and made it into an image of a calf. Are you understanding what I'm saying? See, as God is describing the, his standard as being his word, and we see all through the Bible, God talks about his word. Last Sunday, I believe it was, we read, or uh, two Sundays ago, we read from Psalm 119. In Psalm 119, God, almost every verse, God defines his word as his standard. Amen? Read that chapter when you get home. But here's a couple of verses out of it that, that really resonate in my spirit. In verse 8, I will keep your statutes. Oh, forsake me not utterly. Wherewithal shall a young man do what? Cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. Amen? Amen. And then in verse 10, with my whole heart have I what? Sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. God, keep me close to your standards is what the, what the text is saying. Amen. And then in verse 11, he says, Thy word have I hid in my heart. Why? That I might not sin against God. Amen. See, 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 God 
is telling us how important it is for you and I to live by his standard. Over in Hebrews 4 and verse 12, he says, Thy word of God is what? Quick. That means alive. And powerful. It's sharper than what? Any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of some of the soul and spirit, and of the joints and of the marrow. And it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Do you know that God, his word is so precise mm -hmm. that when you try to outthink God, when you try to outsmart God, well, when you try to do your thing, do you realize that Aaron could not pull nothing over on God? Well, Amen. Amen. Do you realize that Aaron was at the bottom of the mountain mm. and God was talking to Moses on the top of the mountain, but God knew everything that was going on at the bottom of the mountain? Well, it does not matter where you and I go to hide. Yeah. God knows it. Yeah. Psalm 139, if yeah. you go as far as the east is from the west, God already knows it. If you make your bed in heaven or if you descend into hell, God is there too. There's nowhere we can go that we can escape the standard of God. So what does the problem come from? The problems appear when we don't take God serious about his word. When we don't take God serious about his word being his standard. Mm -hmm. And when we don't take God serious about the road map for life and his service. Mm -hmm. See, God has already established your path. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can make this plain. Amen? Mm -hmm. Your name might not be in the Bible. Well. Amen? Amen. But when you study, what is our, what is our, our, our ministry focus is is building faith and family on the principles and promises of God's word. Faith, family, and fellowship, right? So you establish your faith and you spread out into your family and then you go all the way out like God says, go ye therefore into all the world, baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. See, you establish that fellowship. But what are you establishing on, on the principles and the promises of God's word, right? Now watch this, watch this now. Because if I'm building on the principles and the promises of God's word, and we know that all the promises of God are yea and in him amen, and the Bible makes it perfectly clear that, that, that he is the one that calls us into existence. Mm -hmm. Let's go in the Old Testament for a second. At, 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 at Samson. Before Samson was conceived. God sent an angel to communicate with his parent. Mm -hmm. Not only did he communicate with them. Well, but he gave them instructions on how mm -hmm. to raise that Lord. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Let's go over into Jeremiah chapter 1. The Bible says when God called Jeremiah, amen, you need to understand that he told Jeremiah, don't tell me that you're too young. Don't have me none of them excuses. Now, the reason I don't want you to give me none of them excuses, he says, but before you entered your mother's womb, I called you. I ordained you. I already established your path in life. Are y'all understanding where I'm trying to go right now? See, in, in the Bible it says Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. But I want you to know and understand mm -hmm. that you and I are in the same boat. Amen? All right. oh, let's transition over into Galatian. Mm -hmm. What did Paul say? He said the same thing mm -hmm. to Paul. Paul testified about how mm -hmm. he was called by God before his birth. Amen? Amen. And when God made me aware of that, I turned and I communicated with my mom as well as with you that it was God that called me, God that established me, God that put me in this ministry, and it's God that will either keep me here or transition me home. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So you need to know and understand that it was God that brought us where we are. And while Moses, while Aaron and the others were at the bottom of the mountain, no, you don't know every detail of what God's going to do, but what God has asked you to do and commanded us to do is to be faithful to his standard, be faithful to his word, be faithful to his promise, to be faithful to the fact that he says, I 
I alone am the Lord your God. And you don't have no other God before me. Amen. Amen. If you don't understand what, I, what, what I'm taking you through, you just be still. Well, they didn't be still. They got impatient. How many of us are getting All impatient right, today? Amen. How many of us are getting restless because yes. God didn't give you? What's that old expression they have? I'm waiting on my ship to come in. <laughs> All right. That might be your problem. You're looking for a ship. And God's sending you the Holy Spirit. All right, Hello. All right. See, 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 see. We, our problem kicks in when we fail to recognize that God has a roadmap for our life. See, God made it clear that he values his word. He established his word as the standard from creation. Mm -hmm. He established, watch this now, yes. his word as the standard through recreation. Mm -hmm. We are familiar with Romans chapter 12, isn't that right? Mm -hmm. Where the Bible says that I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your body, what? A living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. But I want you to, it, yeah, it's a reasonable thing, but God says also, I want you to be renewed. Renewed, that's where regeneration kicks in. Renewed in your mind, amen? As we become renewed on a daily and regular basis, God is doing a refreshing in our lives. Your thinking should be changing. Your thinking should be growing. There's a song they used to sing, say, every day with Jesus, what? Sweeter than the day before. Amen. So as you begin to grow in the Lord, you ought to be growing more like him. Not more away from him. Amen. Amen. Have you seen a lot of folks starting to do a moonwalk with the Lord? Where they were fired up for the Lord, and now they're starting to slide back. Slide back. Yes. Slide back. Some of the old habits, some of the old ways, some of the old places. Amen. Mm -hmm. And we begin to accept those things as new norms. Mm. Have you noticed that there are new norms in our country today? Yeah. There are new norms in the way folk think today. There are new norms in the way folks live today. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So God established his word as his standard even through regeneration. In the giving of the law, God established his word. And in the giving of his son, what did the Bible say? Yeah. Amen. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. And then the Bible says that in verse 14 of, of John uh, John chapter 1, he say that, that the word became what? Flesh. And we, he dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. Amen. Talking about how Jesus clothed himself yes. in human flesh and still did not deny the fact that he was what? Yes. The Word. That he was what? The standard. Yes. That he was what? Mm. The Son of the living God. Yes. When Jesus was baptized, God the Father spoke. And what did he say? Yes. This is what? My, my beloved Son. Ooh. He be just as easily could have said, this is my beloved standard. He could have said, this is my beloved Word. You understand what I'm saying? They're all interchangeable. Amen. Amen. When Jesus and the disciples were on the Mount of Transfiguration, and the Bible says Jesus stood there, and God again demonstrates by his word and by his action well, that my standard is solid. Yes. When the Bible had Jesus to stand up on this mountain, well, Peter, James, and John were there, and what did God do? Well, he brought back somebody yeah. that had died. Yeah. That's Moses. Right. Amen. Amen. And the Bible says that he died and God buried him. All right. God buried him. Amen. Nobody knows where God buried him, but he died and God buried him. And then the Bible says that there was a person by the name of Elijah who never tasted death. Watch how God works. Right. So Moses and Elijah both show up in the very presence 
of the Son of God, and he had three local witnesses. Well, Amen. Right. And those local witnesses were there. Yeah. And, and you know Peter was on scene. Hey, God, wow, you know, we, we might well build a couple of tents over here. But then what did God say? Yes. Behold, my beloved son, my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. See, even in his son. So where do these fatal faults kick in? Well, when we begin to drift, when we begin to get besides ourselves, here's something I want you to just, just, just put this pen in your head. We, they redefined their relationship. They redefine their relationship. You ever heard somebody speak about their wife and they say, oh yeah, that, I, I know her. <clears throat> they, they, you know, they don't, do, they don't describe her as their wife. I, I, I know her. She a friend of mine. Look at, oh, oh yes, you're going to see this in a minute. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mountain, the people gathered themselves together under Aaron and said unto him, Get up, make us gods, which shall do what? Go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we don't know what is become of him. So do what? Make us gods. They redefined their relationship with God. And I want you to notice that what I read just now is what we read earlier. I'm still in the text. Mm -hmm. You see, and, 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 and they go on to, to, to make it real clear. They say, well, you know, make us some gods. See, they forgot about what really happened. They didn't really forget, though, did they? No. They just shoved it to the side. Yeah. How often are you shoving stuff to the side? Mm -hmm. Anybody ever been in front in, 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 a, in a bad spot with your parents? Well. When they come and they get ready to fire you up, they say, well, my, I didn't know. I didn't know I was supposed to do the dishes. Is this my week? Is this my week to do this? Is it my week to do that? Oh, yeah, you knew. You knew all along. Yes. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you something. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not dumb and I ain't stupid, but if a cop pulled me over, I'm not going to voluntarily tell him what I think he stopped me for. Uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, uh, what, 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 can, you, can, you, can you tell me why you stopped me? <laughs> Amen. Because you might tell him something that he didn't even see. <laughs> well, yeah. what, did, what did I just do? I separated myself from my offense. And in so doing, where am I? Right? See, he didn't even ask me why he... And I asked him, well, excuse me, can you tell me why he stopped me? So, you know, I got a chance to, to regroup. See, what happens is we, we forget... What really happened? So here's the question. How often do you review your salvation experience? All right. How often do you think about the fact that God saved you, not you? How often do you think about where God saved you from? How often do you think about what he snatched you out of? Right, or have you been saved so long yeah, that, that you feel like I got here by myself? Yeah. Or that old expression, you pulled yourself up by your own bootstraps. Are you understanding where I'm going? Yeah, well. you, you, you see, we begin to separate ourselves mm. from our real relationship with God. Amen. What did the Bible say? All have what? Sin. And come what? Short. Short of the glory of God. But that's not the way we begin to think when we start feeling good about ourselves. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. See, 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 I don't live in my past. Mm -hmm. What's that expression? Yeah. Your past don't have to define Amen. you. Amen? Amen. See, because I'm growing through it. I'm growing beyond it. Mm -hmm. That don't mean I don't have it. All right, now. Amen? So that when I think about my past, I should think about also my deliverance. I should think of, when I think about my past, I should think about my deliverer. The children of Israel said, man, it's been such a while since we've seen Moses. We don't know where he is. We don't know what he's doing. Make us some fresh gods. Hello. And in many instances, 
that fresh God that we make, we see him in the mirror. All right. We think more highly of ourselves. In Romans 12, we think more highly of ourselves than we ought to think. Amen? Amen? So, here's another one of those issues. Uh, do, uh, do you really, did you really pull yourself up by your own bootstraps? Or, here's one that I, I, I find very important. They wrote their own script for worship. Very often you might hear me in a teaching setting, God never gave you and I the authority to write our own script. Amen? Amen? Amen. When Moses did not want to go, God did not change the script. What did he change? He changed Moses. He did not change the script for Paul. He changed what? Paul. Amen? Amen. In, uh, in our Bible study, I think we were talking on, on Wednesday night about how the, uh, uh, God uh, told Paul where to go. He was Saul at that time. And then he told Ananias, this guy coming down. And Ananias said, hold up, Lord. This guy, this guy that you're sending down here, uh-uh. Now, I need to make you aware of who he is and what he's doing. <laughs> This guy's got authority to yeah. come down and hurt up on your people. Mm -hmm. And what did God say? Hold up, yeah. Ananias. I called him. Yes. Amen. Amen. I put his life plan in motion. Mm -hmm. I will show him mm -hmm. what he's got to suffer. Yeah. Are you understanding what I'm saying? And 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 and, and when we, we I got kind of excited about that thing because uh, uh, we start talking about this thing. I said, yeah, you know, when I went out that door a couple days ago and, and I did not land the way I wanted to land, but the bottom line is I can rejoice because God shows me what I had to suffer at that time. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know the full nature of what his plan is. I know I still get phone calls and Folks talking about, oh man, we still pray for you, we concern, etc., 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 and all that kind of stuff. But see, how far God's going to take that? That's on God. The important piece is, I need to remember that He's still my God. I should back away from Him because He allowed me to get a little bit hurt. Amen? Uh -huh. Saul, he, 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 got, he got stoned. They, they dropped him out there. They tried to kill him and all this kind of stuff. But he still served God till the day died. And then when he asked God to heal him, what did God tell him? My grace. My grace. Huh? Aaron told them, folks, break off that stuff. You see, yeah. now they're trying to write their own script. Well, well. And when the people broke off all that stuff, and then they said, these be your gods. Yeah. Are you hearing that? All right. After he made that calf, the people said in verse 4, They said, These be your gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. There are leaders yes. that are in those key spots. Right. You need to be careful what kind of leaders you follow. Okay. Now, in addition to that, you need to be careful what kind of leader you become. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen? Somebody's watching you. Yeah. It could be your children. Yeah. It could be your grandchildren. Well, Somebody's yeah. watching you. Yes, Amen? Amen? One of the things that really blessed my heart, I got word just a few days ago that our granddaughter really loves Bible study. Are you hearing me? See, she watching somebody. She's listening to somebody. And she's loving up on going to the Bible study. Now, see, another thing that they did is they abandoned the God of their deliverance. Amen? Amen. See, when God said, I brought you up, I delivered you, as we compare verses 1 and 1b and 4b, even in our text, in, in 1b, for as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt. Amen? Amen. Says it real clear. They said, this man Moses, he brought us up out of the land of Egypt, and we don't know where he is, but look at verse 4b. When they said, these be your gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. You see how they did? They just swapped out. Well, have you swapped out your God? Because he didn't. He because you didn't hit that one point four something billion the other night. All right. Amen. All right. 
There are folks that have changed and altered the way they think and the way they move and the way they function. There are folks that have stepped away from serving God the way they used to because He didn't give them what they wanted. God didn't promise to give you what you want. He promised that He would meet our needs. Amen? Amen. Not our greed. They became pleased with their own efforts. Well, how do you know they became pleased with their own efforts? Number one, they built themselves an altar. Yeah. altar. Mm -hmm. Then they made an announcement. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. Look at that announcement that was made when Aaron turned around and he built them. In verse 5, Aaron saw this. He built an altar in front of the calf and then he made an announcement. And what was the announcement? Uh -huh. This will be a, there will be a festival mm -hmm. to who? To the Lord tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Just because you name it for God does not make it right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, I remember when I was a child growing up here and I went to this uh, uh, little youth conference and I still have the things at home. There was a church. I know where the church is. Matter of fact, I've seen the new pastor. I don't know whether they're doing this now or not. But way back then, mm -hmm. they had this thing where they had tickets. And y'all know that churches used to sell raffle tickets mm -hmm. and cakes and pot. But this particular raffle ticket said baskets of cheer. Mm -hmm. See, I'm a, I'm a weird kind of guy because I hang on to stuff and I don't know why. <laughs> but this thing said baskets for cheer. Well. And, 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 and why am I saying that? Because, you see, they made announcements. They established a new kind of worship. They established their own festival mm -hmm. just because you drag God's name into it. I want to say that again. It does not mean it meets God's approval. Well, yeah. Amen? Amen. Just because you got a bus that you take to Atlantic City mm -hmm. and, and, and you're going down there for dinner, but you, you don't emphasize that we're here to represent the Lord, well. so don't go in there and take your tithes and lose them trying to double them. <laughs> Uh, somebody will get there. It does not mean it has God's blessings. God considered. Listen to what God says over in Aunt Isaiah. And we can read it, we can read it right. Amen. Amen. In Isaiah chapter 1, God says, I have more than enough of your burnt offerings. Yes. I have more than enough of your rams. Yes. And the fat of your fattest animals, mm -hmm. I do not find any pleasure in. Mm -hmm. The blood of your bulls, lambs, and goats. Mm -hmm. Whoa, who asked you to bring all those animals well, when you come to worship me? Amen. Who asked you, who asked you? and your animals mm -hmm. to walk all over my courtyard? Yes. And then in verse 13, mm -hmm. He, he just get downright, and I wish I was over King James right now. He says, stop bringing offerings uh -huh. that do not mean anything to me. All right. Are oh, you understand? We're talking this morning about living by God's standard. If God set the standard, don't try to change it. He says, stop bringing offerings that don't mean anything to me. I hate your incense. I can't stand your evil gatherings. I can't stand the way you celebrate your new moon feasts, Sabbath days, and special services. I hate your new moon feasts and your other appointed feasts. They have become a heavy load to me. I'm tired of carrying it out. You, you might spread your, your hands toward me when you pray. Guess what? Watch this now. But I will not look at you. You might even offer many prayers, but I will not listen to you, to them. Your hands are covered with blood of the people you've murdered. So wash your hands and make yourself clean. Get your evil actions out of my sight. Stop doing what is wrong. See, what's happening? We fail to understand 
that God, watch this now, God eavesdrops. I want you to understand what I just said. God eavesdrops. You know, one of the things I have learned recently, and I'm learning it more and more, is my daughter, baby girl, with her own babies, she got a set of ears on her. I'd be in the other room, and I whisper something to my wife, and then I hear a response, Lord help me, Lord help me. I'd be in there picking at her, Lord help me. And then she turned around and say something, I say, I say, buttercup, buttercup, and, and you know, I'm trying to get somebody on my side, Lord help me, I ain't messing with y'all. God eavesdrops. God hears what's going on. He was on the mountain. Moses was on the mountain. They were down in the at the foot of the mountain. And they were, they, remember now, they sat down to eat. And they got up to party. And while they were partying, God was eavesdropping saints. Y'all you understand? God knows what we're doing. He knows when we're doing it. He knows how we're doing it. He is never caught off guard. He's fully aware of our ingenuous plans and maneuvers to displace him. Amen. I said it that way on purpose. Yes. Yes. He is fully aware of how ingenuous we are, ingenuous we are, and how we turn around and we do things to displace him. See, what happened? God brought them out of the wilderness. And he knew it, and they needed to be reminded of it. God established the leadership, and Aaron needed to be reminded of that. Amen? And Moses needed to be reminded of that. What did God tell Moses? He said, your people. Amen? That you brought out. And that's your leader. Amen? That you need to hold him accountable. Are you understanding where I'm going, sir? He says, God established the worship standards. God established yeah. the worship criteria. Yeah. And the Lord God said unto Moses, I want you to go. I want you to get you down for your people, which you brought out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. What did they do? Verse 8. They turned aside quickly out of the way, which yeah. what? I commanded them. Well, they have done what? They made themselves a golden calf. Look at how much detail God has given Moses. And Moses ain't moved from where he was. Amen. 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 He said they 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 they, they crafted a, a, a molten calf. Mm -hmm. They worshiped it. They sacrificed there unto. They said that these be thy gods. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, Israel, which have brought you where? Out of the land of Egypt. Wow. And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, and beheld, it is a stiff-necked people. Yeah. You hear me what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. See, if, if, if God call you stiff-necked, mm -hmm. you can't blame that on your pastor. Right. You can't right. say, God, I don't like him because he keep talking about me. Yeah. No, you read it for yourself. Well, well. Yeah. And then he goes on to say, in verse 10, now, therefore, leave me alone, amen, that my wrath may wax hot against them, and that I may consume them, and I will make of you a great nation. I want y'all to see that real clear. God told Moses, get out of my way. I want to spend some time letting my wrath grow so that I can wipe them out. And when I wipe them out, you, Moses, I'm going to take you and I'm going to start all over and I'm going to start all over with you. And there's some folk that would jump up and say, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, get them hard, hard-headed people. Yeah. They don't want to come to church no way. Yeah. Give me some people that that that, that going to do this and going to do that. Now, what did Moses do? Moses didn't do that. Moses wanted to live by the standard of God. Why? Because God's name is to be exalted. God's name is to be lifted up. Amen. So Moses, Moses besought the Lord. Verse 11. The, Moses besought the Lord, his God, and said, Lord, why does your wrath wax hot against your people, which you have brought forth out of the land of Egypt? See, Moses was not still God's glory. He knew that, yes, I was the leader, but I couldn't have brought them out without you. Amen. 
That was your power. That was your authority. They're your people, God. Amen. And you brought them out, Lord. Amen. And he says, you brought them forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand. Wherefore, now, Lord, if you, if you wipe them out and start all over with me, look at verse 12. Wherefore, all these Egyptians are going to say, for mischief did he bring them out well. to slay them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth. So Moses said what? Lord, turn your fierce wrath and repent of this evil against your people. And then what did Moses do? Moses in his prayer. This is a prayer instruction I want to leave with you. Moses in his prayer said to God, let's go back. To your original standard. What is the standard you established with Israel? He says, remember who? Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. He was Jacob, but Jacob became Israel. Your servants to whom you swore by your own self and said to them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven. And all this land that I have spoken of will I give unto yes. what? Your seed. And they shall inherit it. How long? Forever. And God gave them a break. Amen. Are you understanding why it's so important, saints? See, God know you and I are going to come up short. He know we're going to slip and we're going to slide. But guess what? He's right there to catch us. He's right there to lift us up. I want you to open up your bulletin and pay attention to something that I don't know if you if it grips you like it grips me. Open up your bulletin if you have it right there. Open it up. Look on the left side, on the bottom. Our key theme. What does our key theme say? This is something I want you to start visualizing. He says, I waited how long? Patiently. Well, the children of Israel, they didn't want to wait no more because Moses was up there and they couldn't figure out where he was at. Ain't that right? Amen. They got impatient with him. And then he says, I waited patiently for the Lord and what? To help me. And he did what? Turn to me. And what did he do? He heard my cry. But look what else he did. He lifted me where? Out of the pit of despair. Out of the mud. Out of the mire. And what did he do? He set my feet on solid ground. Watch this now. Here's the part that you need to pay attention to. After he set you on solid ground, what did he do? He steadied you. Anybody ever? See, when I fell a couple days ago and I started looking back as a safety rep and I started looking back over the causal effects and stuff like that, I had on them fancy shoes. I had on them cutesy shoes. They were snakeskin shoes and they had a slippery bottom. And it was pouring down rain out there. When I looked at the bottom of them shoes, I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. So so what, what did he do? When, when, when you get up out of the mud, your feet going to be slippery. Stand you on a rock, what's going to happen? You have the potential of slipping, sliding, and falling. But the text says... That when he puts you up on a solid foundation, what does he do? He steadies you. Are you understanding what I'm saying? God will steady you. God will keep you. He will preserve you as I walk along. Amen. Now that I have the confidence that God's got me and that I am walking in the path that he wants me in. He said, God done gave me a new song. Yeah. I can keep on singing a new song. Well, still serving the same God. Yeah. Still worshiping him in spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. I can continue on. So as I live for the Lord and as I do what God wants me to do, guess what he says in Isaiah 1, 18? He said, come now and let's what? Reason together. Huh? Saith the Lord. Though your sin be what? As scarlet, huh? they shall be as white as snow. And though they be red like crimson, huh? they shall be what? As wool. He said, now, 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 verse 18. I want you to, to, to listen to this thing and listen very carefully. See, we, we stop at 18. But 19 has some special stuff for us to understand. He says, come now, let us reason together. Though your sin be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Verse 19. If you be, what, what's that word? All right. If you be what? 
willing. And what else? Obedient. You shall eat the good of the land. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. I believe there is another verse that, that, that supports that. Because it shows that God has something else planned if you're not willing and if you're not obedient. Let me see if I can, I can grab that right quick. Amen. 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 He says, if you be willing, here we go. If you be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. But, verse 20, if you refuse, and what? Rebel. Mm -hmm. You will be devoured mm -hmm. with the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense to you? Okay. Does that declare mm -hmm. that we should be learning the importance of living by God's standard? Let's bow it. You know, God is real clear about that. Amen. God is real clear about those things. He said, come now. When he said come, he's asking us to repent. If you and I have gotten impatient with God, if you and I have gotten to the place in our lives where, where we, we become rebellious or we become distant. Did you hear that? Distant. Jesus, when he was ministering, there was a time when he turned around and he said, a lot of those folk, they weren't following him up close anymore. They were following from a distance. If you've gotten distant from the Lord, he's still telling you to come on, come, 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 come back home. He says, repent so that you can be what? Forgiven. Mm -hmm. And then you can live it out. Amen. Mm -hmm. Our Father and our God, we thank you. For all that you have done for us. I thank you in a very special way, Lord. For the preservation of your word and your standing. I thank you that you show us the good, the bad, the ugly, and the indifferent. And I thank you that the Holy Spirit will show us where we are on that line. God, I thank you that even though... There were some shortcomings amongst your people. Moses had a heart for serving. And in his heart, his heart was not selfish. Even though you said that you would wipe them out and start afresh, Moses said, oh no God, your name needs to be magnified. Your name is the one that needs to be exalted. And Moses asked and pleaded that you would have mercy upon your people. Yes. Father God, we pray today, not only for those yes. under the sound of my voice, yes. but Lord, we approach the altar for one's self. We approach your altar for our country and our city. Yes. God, we ask for your mercy. Mm -hmm. We ask for your forgiveness. But we ask also that you will touch hearts, mm -hmm. minds, and spirits so that we might see the value mm -hmm. and the importance of repentance. <coughs> Lord, we don't get close to you if we yes. are not willing to repent. Yes. If we're not willing to, mm -hmm. to forsake yes. and return mm -hmm. unto you. So Lord, we thank you, thank you for your word. We thank you for the truth of your word. We thank you, Father, for the clarity of your word. We pray even right now that, Lord, if there are any under the sound of my voice, mm -hmm. any, O oh Lord, that know not thee in the free pardon of their sin, any that have never invited you to come into their lives for salvation, we pray, O oh God, that they will see and know and understand mm -hmm. that your word says that you you love the world so much that you gave your only begotten Son. Yes. And whosoever would confess their sin and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, we can be saved. Mm -hmm. If there are any, oh God, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. We ask that you would tell us. Then God, for those that may have gotten on the slippery slope of life, that have gotten distant from you, those, Lord, that need to be drawn closer to you, need to be drawn into reconciliation, need to be drawn, oh Lord, like the prodigal son. We pray, oh God, by your spirit, that you would touch that heart so that they might cry, Lord, here am I. And like my predecessor in this scripture, I have sinned against heaven and I have sinned against those that I, my father or whoever it might be. And I'm not worthy, but I'm asking that you would draw me home. Like the hymnologist says, draw me nearer. Nearer, precious Lord. My Father and our God, we thank you right now. And we count on this day. We pray, O Lord, that by your Spirit, those that are crying out to you this day, and you simply ask, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Save me. Forgive me. Heal me. And see. And Father, as they do, we ask that by your Spirit, you will bring us all in contact, one with another, so that together we might worship you according to your Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Awesome. Everybody ought to hear right with God. Yeah. Said we ought to get yeah, right with God. Well, He'll he show you how. Whoa, now let the cross. Yeah, well, He shed His blood. Said you ought to get. Yeah. Church, amen. 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 I'm going to ask you to turn with me in the back of your hymnals at this time. And while you're turning to hymn number, uh, the response to reading 598, which we turn to as we worship the Lord in the Lord's Supper, I want to challenge you. I want to challenge your engagement. I want to challenge you to come alongside somebody that you miss. Get on the phone with somebody that you haven't seen. Mm -hmm. And let us do what we need to do to make sure that the people of God and even those that are unsaved or those that are backslidden that you're familiar with have a fresh reminder that God never fails. Amen. In our responsive reading, as we prepare for the Lord's Supper, 5, 9, 8. I'll read the light print, you read the dark print, we'll all read the last portion together. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he prayed it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This too in remembrance of me. At the same manner also he took the cup, which he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, 
Whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation unto himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another together. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. Amen. Amen. We want to be mindful that the Bible makes it clear that when Jesus set this thing in place, amen? amen. See, first and foremost, uh, this Passover was set in place so they had a constant reminder that it was God that brought them through their deliverance. But now when Jesus made the transition on what we call the Last Supper, he made it clear that uh, he was letting them know that it we're talking about the fact that he was going to suffer. He was going to lay his life on the line for you and I. Our Father and our God, we pray with thanksgiving again for the reminders that you place all throughout your word. And we thank you, dear God, for the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. For the scripture says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. We thank you, dear God, that he looked beyond our faults. He saw that we are people that are in need. He died for us. He rose from the grave for us. And he has made it perfectly clear that those that have come unto him shall he in no wise cast out. So, Lord, we ask your blessing upon this time of fellowship around this bread and about this drink so that it might be that continual reminder unto us of what Jesus did for us. Father, we pray that you'll bless those partaking. We pray, O oh God, for those that have not yet come to that place where they acknowledge you that, Lord, even in seeing or hearing about its significance, they too might begin to, to find that yearning in their hearts. Lord, what must I do to be saved? Lord, I believe that you died for me. Father, we thank you. And we praise you and count it up for Jesus' sake. I right, so thank you, Lord. Amen. And amen. In obedience, is everyone prepared or is anyone in need of substance? As we prepare, in obedience to the Lord's command, the Bible says he took the bread and he broke it. And he distributed amongst all those disciples. In obedience to the Lord's command, let us all eat. <coughs> also, he took a cup and he poured there in his contents. He says, freely as you see it flow, freely receive it. For it does show forth my suffering. Amen. Amen. Let us all drink together. Amen, amen, amen. 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 This may be the last time. This may be the last time. This may be the last time. It may be the last time. I don't know. Oh, this may be the last Oh. Together, may 